Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the Jade Gemini. Today, I'm super excited to go ahead and bring you a review of this guy right here. This is a Chris Reeve Knives and Cozy Small. So today I'm gonna to go ahead and be running you through what I like, what I love, what I dislike, and if it applies, what is rubbish about the Nkosi. Before we do that, let's go ahead and get some size comparisons out of the way before we jump right in. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and be comparing it to a knife that is very popular in uh, the everyday carry community, the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And even if you don't have this knife, this is a really, really great knife for comparison size because it is right around that PM2 size, you know, cold steel, code four, you know, just that full size, large 3.5 inch ish, you know, blade uh, knife, right? Um, a little bit more on the compact knife size, we have the Para 3, ever popular, I'm sure. You know, just about everybody's either held the one of these or owns it themselves. So as you can see, this is not a big knife, you know, whatsoever. Uh, last knife that I think makes a lot of sense actually to compare it to is the Benchmade Bug Out Mini. So as you can see, that is a lot more close in size. Kind of jumping right into that too, let's go ahead and get um, some size comparisons on the thickness of the knife. So. As you can see, the Nkosi is quite a bit thicker than your, your um, bug out, sorry, mini, um, which isn't really that much thicker than the regular bug out, so you can kind of somewhat compare them, which makes sense because the Nkosi means chief, um, and this is supposed to be a more beefy boy than the uh, standard Sabenza is. So it's a little thicker, you know, overall. Now, as you can see, this actually isn't a thick knife. Um, you know, it is a little thicker than the bug out, but the bug out is pretty, you know, thin, to be honest. Um, also, a comparison that we'll get out of the way, since it is compared to the PM2 and the Para 3, is the Para 3 side by side. So, as you can see, it is right around the same thickness as that knife, but doesn't feel it because of these nice chamfered edges which give it sort of a semi-contoured feel, which we'll get into. So that sort of gets the basics out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So first, what do I like about this knife? Well, the first thing that I like is, uh, well, the steel. The version that I have here is actually having a one of the brand new next generation super steels that is out S45VN. Um, if you're not aware, Wow, that's cool that I actually have them on. Sorry, I didn't even plan this. So, if you're not aware, the um, S30V, S35VN, and now S45VN are all connected. The reason why is Chris Reeve, nice, Chris Reeve himself actually contracted out to Crucible back in 2001 to create S30V. And then 10 years later in 2011, I think it was, S35VN. And now in two, uh, you know, 11 years later, I think in 2001, there was S45VN. I might have some of those dates wrong, but I'm just about bang on. Now the reason why this is a cool thing is because with cutlery, um, knives that is, the steels that are used are not made for knives, actually. M390, for example, was originally designed as an, a steel made for Arctic drilling, a steel that has very high wear resistance as well as a very high corrosion resistance, which would make sense in an environment where you're constantly drilling into wet ice. Um, and they just kind of threw it in a pocket knife and it seemed to work. Same thing with some of these other things like Mega Pounder crew wear and stuff. It was not designed for knives, right? But because it is this really tough, you know, tool steel that might be used for like saws or something, right? They've put it in a knife and it sort of works. These three steels, right, that I just mentioned, were all designed um, in mind to actually work for Chris Reeve and also for the knife industry as a whole. 
So, you know, this just sort of improves on those really great characteristics that S30V, which is still a great steel. You know, it's an older steel that's been around, so some people might say, oh, that I'm just getting S30V instead of 20CV, right, or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's a great steel. So is S35VN. It has a high level of tough toughness, um, you know, tougher than, you know, a lot of stainlesses. Um, you know, it still holds an edge, you know, better than, you know, 154CM or other things like that if properly heat treated. So this is just really a nice balanced steel, right? And it's nice to have something a little different in the collection. The next thing about this knife that I like is the fact that the pocket clip is actually really good on this. Um... Odd thing, right? Just just go ahead and uh, you know point out, but it really is. You know, it's really easy. Doesn't have a super amount of spring, but yet has a lot of grip because of both this contact point here and then this sort of bulge in contact point as well, which grips your pants basically in two places and just really really secures the knife. It enables the knife to be taken in and out of the pocket really easy. And even though it does have this sort of scoop up because it flattens out, it's not super bad in the hand. Like if you make yourself mindful of it, like please can I just notice that pocket clip, then yeah, you're going to notice it. But when the way that this knife is held, it goes right there in that palm or in between my fingers. And, um, you know, the way I hold on to this, there's no sort of real problem if, you know, if I'm pinching on the back or I kind of creep up on it and get up on the knife like this. You can also use your finger like this and pull it out so it makes it easier to extract out of pants. So just overall, you're just about the most perfect pocket clip. Um, you know, usually I like the deep carry stuff, and honestly, I'm just going to keep this bad boy on here because it is so great. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of trying to throttle plate myself here because that's what I like about the knife because, as you're about to find out, hold on, there is a lot to love about this knife. So I think first and foremost, before I get into anything, and again, I try to stay as biased as possible, but I'm gonna give you my genuine experience with anything I'm putting as far as content. So about a year or two ago, I made a video that was the Chris Reeves knife Sabenza. Is it really worth it, right? And I apologize, it's a little bit of a clickbaity, uh, you know, title, it, as anything is. That's what you have to do as a YouTuber. You don't want people not to click on your stuff, right? But it was true. I kind of went over if I thought at that time it was worth it. And it basically came around and said the quality is phenomenal, um, but the price is really high. And I just didn't know if at that point, you know, I was ready to go ahead and have something that was so nice. Um... I ended up returning that knife because after a while, the newness, the sort of honeymoon phase wore off and I was just like, man, this is really kind of a shame. Am I the only one? Because like everybody everywhere, Discord, Facebook, YouTube, it's just like my my grail, my grail is the Sabins. Oh my gosh, right? And I got it and I, and I just didn't like it. So I actually got one again about a year and a half later during COVID and thought, yeah, now I'm ready. This is the time, I've traded in some stuff. And again, I had the same sort of situation. Metal Complex really said it well on one of his uh, live streams, which definitely subscribe to Metal Complex if you're not, but I'm sure you are. Um, but he basically said like, he was wanting angels to come down and go, huh, oh, and this light come, and just this amazing experience. And he goes to open the knife and he's just like, huh, this, 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 you know what I mean? Like everything was finished so nice and looked so nice, but then he went and opened it and just fell flat. So I was really kind of taken back by that because I wanted my Chris Reeve knife's experience. And I really liked the way the knives looked. I think that they were attractive and the, the fit and finishing is just about the best up there, but it just didn't click with me. So I tried the Nkosi, which I've kind of always liked to sort of kind of being somewhat of a hipster before a hipster was even a thing. I've always kind of liked the things that people didn't like and didn't like the things that people liked. Uh, you know, I've just kind of always been that way, right? So the Nkosi Small, I was like, well, a lot of people don't like it. You know, Nick Shabazz, again, I'm sure you're subscribed to him, but go ahead and click if not. Um, but yeah, he was basically like, it's too small for my hand. Long story short, drawing this all out, 
Third time is the charm. This is my favorite knife I've ever owned. The only thing that would even come right parallel to it is probably my old Troodon that I used to have from Mycotech. And it's just in a completely different reason why, right? Why this has this great, smooth, amazing action. These noises that are just tink and this just robustness thunk that just locks the knife into place. If you hold it like this, it freaking goes and makes this really high pitch clink noise that just sounds like some sort of bank vault thing. Um, it's just the whole thing is here. And this one really clicked with me. The action feels a little different. And I also feel like the size might play a part of it. Because of the stiff action of the Sabenza, when you get to right about here, my smaller hands, which are definitely small, don't necessarily have the throw to push all the way around. So I always felt like it was sort of awkward, like I was stopping, having to crawl up and do like that. And it just, it just didn't lead into this. While this knife feels as if it was crafted for my hand, I was the prototype that, that Chris Reeve used to make this knife. That, that's how it feels. It feels perfect for the size of my hand. It's a full four finger knife. It's just, sorry, I'm gonna try and tune it back, but I love this thing. Now why? Why do I love it? Well, not only did I get my cake finally and get to eat it too, had my Chris Reeve experience and fell in love with one of their models, but it's all those little touches, right? Which make a Chris Reeve so great. So everything feels, one, specifically made to the highest caliber for this knife. Take, for example, the pivot, right? This fat old big pivot is just really, really intense and sort of commands presence on this knife. But then when you look into it, it's insanely deep, so it's easy to maintenance this, which we'll talk about that in a little while. As well, it has a even deeper side over here. I've actually taken this knife apart and screwed it together, and it was actually really easy to fine tune the action. I was afraid that I would run it, but with just very little effort, I was able to get the action where it has no play at all, but is smooth enough to do that, which I don't do it honestly that often. I almost feel like it's kind of like, you know, roughhousing a, a delicate lady, right? I don't know what it is about the Chris Reeve thing, right? But it, it is so true that you're just kind of like, no, 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 you kind of treat it nicely, right? Gentle, yeah. Oh, that's what it's all about, right? It just feels that way. I can't, it's something that I can't explain. And that's the other thing that I love is you just can't explain, but it, it this just has a different experience and a soul to it that is so excellent. Long story short, when you take this knife apart, you know, the, the fixtures, everything is like no other knife that I've seen before. The way that this interface is so tightly around here, this backspacer, the way it is inset in here, the way it's so beautifully chamfered and everything is constantly changing. These little sort of flare outs that kind of remind me of what, um, you know, like a Voxnese knife de de design does, you know, this chamfer up here, right? The way that this lock bar just looks, that actually sets in deep, just looks like that's the way a lock bar is supposed to look. I wonder why. Well, it's because Chris Reeve created the first titanium frame lock, which I'm holding a titanium frame lock from Chris Reeve, right? So it just sort of gets that point. Also, the way the action feels with this ball lock, it just sort of rounds off and snaps into place. There's just so much pantomime and drama and this experience around this knife that just, it's like my Seiko turtle would be a perfect example. Every single time I experience that watch, it is just like the first day, right? Renewed. It's not like, uh, like this knife. I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is a really good knife. I'm glad it's in my collection. I carry it for a day. And I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. Let me kind of get something new in my hands. While this is just so special, I don't know. It's all those details. Um, the rounded spine, this little tiny clip right here, the thinness of the edge, this convex, right? Definitely, definitely this finishing I absolutely love. The crispness, the crispness of the logo, like I said, all the chamfering, this cutout for the lock bar, the way the lock bar sort of bites into the lock 
and then when you unengage it, you know, it disengages. There's just all these little things, Idaho, I mean, anything about it that just sort of stand out and it is special every single time you carry this knife. What's also special and what I love about this knife is, well, that action, right? It's like nothing else. God help me, because I'm going to say, it's like very hydraulic. I'm sure you've never heard that before if you've ever watched a uh, Chris Reeve knife interview, right? But it's true, right? It is this sort of grip, but frictionless, but still like tight feeling action. It doesn't feel like jittery like a lot of actions do that sort of feel like they have some like grip on them it is smooth and it feels frictionless like there's constant oil being pumped onto the surface and sort of flushed away in the background right it's just it's awesome i love it and again the sort of the way that the noise is made and you know everything it's just it's excellent for that as well what I'm also so happy about is that this thing is a performer, right? It is such a sharp tip that just pokes in, as well as this excellent hollow grind action that is a little bit, uh, action, geez, sorry, blade, that uh, is a little little bit thick, not really thick at all, but um, you can tell it's not like the thinnest behind the edge, but because of the way that it goes right into the thin, it is just such a joy to use this knife and cut, right? I mean, it's just fun. You want to open this and you want to cut into a package. You want to feel it doing work. The knife is so perfectly designed and calculated. And again, I've had this for over three months. So it's not like I'm in the honeymoon phase and I'm just fanboying over it. I don't want a Sabenza. I just want another Nkosi, right? So I'm not like a CRK fanboy. And I would like to hold a Num Num Zan, but I don't think I would like to own it. I just don't know if it's really my style, right? There's just something about this knife and everything about it and the experience that I am just 100% sold as a fan. Um, again, the way it also fits me is really great. There's this sort of confidence inspiring the way that this is sort of cut out. Your finger holds into this groove and this groove. And then the rest just sort of flows around really, really nicely. But it has this cutout right here. Now, when I first got it, I think I was trying to jam my finger in there, which, yes, if you were trying to do that, I could understand why, um, you know, someone like Nick Shabazz or a lot of other reviewers would say it just feels awkward. But for me, I more so put it up at the front like this and then use my middle fingers and then just sort of wrap it around. So I could sort of pinch off the back or I can hold it confidently like this and choke up. You know, naturally you can pull up like this. It's just comfortable in so many different grips and usable. It just feels great. I don't know. It's just like for me, this knife is perfect. And I'm such a stickler that, um, you know, for things that, you know, I, I lose interest if something isn't perfect. And I think that it's actually mildly not on center. Like the most mild, mild, that might, probably I would only be able... So, I mean, there is some flaws with the knife, right? But I don't care. The sharpening, for example, at the very tip just sort of goes whoop and rounds up a little bit there. I don't care because it performs great. It feels great. It looks great. It's a great experience every single time. It's enjoyable. It's just excellent. The next thing, um, let's go ahead and kind of talk about what I dislike or more so what other people dislike. And it is the thumb stud. Now, I can understand what people are all about. If you're pushing down on the knife like this and then trying to flick it open, right, then, yeah, that would be something that, you know, is kind of hard and maybe hurts your finger. Who knows? For me, though, I think it's kind of perfect for what the design and the action style of the Chris Reeve knife is. It sort of distributes this, your, you know, finger pad pressure over the whole entire edge so you can easily control as you roll the knife. As well, the sort of point, maybe it's uncomfortable if you use like the meat fat, you know, opening, but to me, it sort of points right into like your bone or your joint there and allows you to open it up that way as well. So for me, it, it's never been something that is bad on the two, you know, Sabenzas that I had and, you know, weren't for me or this guy right here. It's never been a problem, but that is a huge point of um, can, a sort of Marmite thing. You either 
don't mind it or maybe even like it, or you just hate it and it's the worst thing in the world. And people swap them out and do things like that. So something to keep in mind. The other thing is it doesn't come with a dual stud. I got lucky and mine was a dual stud version, but usually they're a single stud version. So it just, you know, why not add that, right? I can spidey flick it. I didn't like how how firmly I actually flicked that, right? I usually like to do it a little bit softer. Like I said, I just naturally you want to baby this knife. But um, yeah, that's another thing that could be kind of crazy. Now they do make left-hand versions of this knife, so you are gonna go and be in luck with that. You don't have to get the dual thumb stud, but it's fun to do that flick as you saw. You know, again, it's still fun to fidget this knife all day long. And so maybe out of 50 slow opens, I might flick it one time, right? Just the way that it is. Um, it feels solid and in hand. It doesn't feel heavy, but maybe for a smaller knife, you know, it, it's not as light as this, right? Again, not a complaint for me. It feels just completely bankful, uh, solid, which again is a part of that whole experience. Also going back to something I love, because it is so small and it has all these chamfers around and everything like that, I forgot to mention that this thing just disappears in the pocket. Um, it doesn't have a deep carry pocket clip, which some people might not like, but honestly, it's so you know tight up in there, the way that this goes sort of vertical and down, that you know the pants pocket just sort of shows this much of the knife. And you can get you know aftermarket clips, but honestly, that doesn't really bother me right that it just sort of barely pokes out it's never sort of been a problem for me and uh, but it is something i wanted to point out from an end user point because there are so many knives that are sold with deep carry pocket clips and people really look for that as a standard right there's nothing that is rubbish about this knife in my opinion um overall like I said, I mean, I don't know what else is to be said that a hundred other people haven't said, you know, before about Chris Reeve Nice, but I absolutely love this. The only thing I would kind of address is the price. This thing is $375 brand new, right? Is it worth that? Well, for me, yes. And I would even say I would pay $425 for this, right? Because it just is something that is so special and amazing to me. And to me, the plain chain version, I like way more than the MyCard or the inlay versions, right? For me personally, right? I think 375 is fair, especially the history, the sort of techniques and manufacturing that go in and the, the sort of also company that you know you're getting. You know, if you break a blade while working on it, you can send it in. You can get it rebladed in Magna Cut now. It has this, you know, infinite interface ceramic ball lock that you can just keep replacing the blades and you can hand this down to your grandchildren, right? So, I mean, the fact of the matter is it is it's not cheap, right, in any sort of means whatsoever. Um, but if you're looking at this knife, I don't think it's just going to be from, you know, a casual, you know, uh, knife buyer, somebody who's just getting into the hobby. I think you're well, well deep within the hobby, you know, before you've gotten into this point, right? Or maybe word of mouth has led you here where you're like, hey, my worker friend, you know, that's in construction says that the Sabenza or the, you know, in Kosi's, Chris Reed's the best, right? What about this? So, you know, either way, it's going to be a tool that's going to last if you're using it for work, and it's going to meet that expectation of greatness if you're looking at it for the experience, and it is a grail, rightfully so. So that is that. I uh, hope it was fun to see my passion. I know I probably rambled way too long about this, but again, I mean, what hasn't already been said about this knife? So I'm just going to say, hey, let me go ahead and get it on film and just, you know, give a genuine review and sort of reaction to the knife. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, go ahead and give a like as well as comment down below as I love fellowshipping with you guys. And if you want to see more EDC content like this, go ahead and subscribe as well as there's many more videos as well. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video as there's so many amazing content creators out there and you've decided to click on my little video. So I really appreciate that. I hope everybody has an amazing rest of your day and take care. Peace.